Here we go! Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy the Weather Skull, the background's orange, and I'm looking like a villain from a 60s horror movie. You know what that means? It's Halloween. And what better way to celebrate it than talking about something themed, you know? So today, we'll be finally talking about... DEATH? Please, that was my father's name. Call me James. Welcome to the Underworld Waiting Room. Here you'll be waiting until you'll be dead and gone for real. What do you mean I'm dead? I was just... talking! Well, you still got shot, so whatever you were talking about really got that somebody angry. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I'm the one who allows people inside my green strip void. Well, that person didn't give a damn then. You can't do anything about it apart from finding some plot convenience so you can get back to your void. Plot convenience, you say? Well, since I need a while to get a good idea, could you, um, give me something to pass the time with? Sure, I just think I have the perfect thing. Yeah! Kirby's Dreamland 2? Why this one? You see, I like the hamster. That's it. Alright, I don't really have anything else to do, so... I'll check this out, I always wanted to play it. You seem like a cool guy. I'll scour the undead libraries whilst you're playing. Who knows, I might actually, you know, get you out of there. So, Kirby, you love him, right? Well, how sure does, and it was no different back in the day, as not only was Sakurai developing some Kirby games, but an undone team of talented developers led by Shinichi Shimomura was developing a sequel to the original Kirby's Dream Land for Game Boy. We sadly don't know much about the development of this title, but we are aware of the fact that they really must have loved animals, since the main gimmick of this game is the introduction of the Animal Buddies, characters based on certain level times that can help you traverse all the stages. Not only that, but the main goal of the game must have been to expand upon the original game's premise. Copy abilities, a hub board, safe files, more extra modes, and more are all new features present in this game, most of them inspired by Kirby's Adventure. The game itself takes a much more slower approach when compared to the NES title. In fact, you are not able to run, and levels have become smaller to fit its status as an handheld title. The plot of this game focuses on a new evil entity, Dark Matter. It has spread through all of Dreamland, and now it's up to you, Kirby, and friends to defeat it and bring back peace to the land. The game itself is a very fun experience, since the levels are not only amazing to look at, but also interesting to play around with the animal bodies and copy abilities. Scoured across the levels, you'll find a lot of mini-bosses, and after defeating them, you'll be rewarded with a bag with all the animal bodies inside. This not only helps a lot with the pace of the game, but also its puzzles. Since there's not a lot of copy abilities, only 7 of them in fact, the fun of the game comes from trying all the different animal ability combinations. Some of them can result in very great offensive options, like Ku mixed with Cutter or Burning with Kine, but some of them can be pretty awesome ways of movement, such as Parasol mixed with Ku. Not only that, but some abilities mixes like Burning Rick or Stone Rick provide very good replacements for the abilities that we didn't have in this game. And inside every world there is a rainbow drop, which will be accessible only with a very specific combination. It is decent for replayability, albeit I would have preferred if there was at least a little way to tell what combination you have to use. Let's get this stupid fucking rainbow drop for example. You need to, and prepare yourself, get kind, get the burning ability, go down this path, shoot a fireball, free exact times, or else you'll burn some things that you shouldn't burn, swim down, remove your ability, quickly suck these blocks before the star explodes, and then grab the ability again and melt these last blocks. Did you get all that? Well, I sure fucking didn't! You know, because the game doesn't actually give you more than one chance. If you fail, it's all over again. The thing I've been showing this entire time is a fucking online video, for God's sake. But I mean, the game locks the final boss behind getting all the rainbow drops, so this will indeed take a while. Uh, let's see here. Plot, plot, plot. Here, plot convenience for beginners. Uh, the hero's journey, call to adventure, transformation. Alright, so in case of Paul Wright and give the protagonist a way to escape the struggles with a bet, 
which will prove their intellect. Hmm. So that seems like a good way to challenge the guy. Wait, what's this? Rick the Book. <laughs> well, after a little bit of rainbow drop business and a fight against DDD, Dark Matter Swordsman, and Dark Matter, the game is over. And I have to say, Kirby's Dreamland 2 is not a bad game by any means. It's just that in the last words, a super unexpected difficulty curve occurs, and the game starts to like bad level design a little bit too much. Auto scrolling stages will become more common by the second. Apart from that and the super tiring collectibles, Dreamland 2 is a fun game. It's filled with charm, albeit it has its moments. Especially because of the animal bodies and super memorable soundtrack. Now, if only there was a better version of this game on superior hardware. Huh, neat. The Super Nintendo. Here is where most of the big Nintendo franchises got their chance to evolve and form into a vision of themselves which was closer to the original developers' vision. And Kirby was no exception. Also, wow, the last sentence was just a tongue twister, oh my god. The main SNES game people think about when they think of Kirby is Kirby Superstar, an ambitious collection of game modes that made you feel like a greater evolution of the Kirby franchises. But on the other hand, Shimamura and company were tasked with creating a sequel to Dreamland 2, a more ambitious project than the first one. And so, Kirby's Dreamland 3 was born. Albeit putting these side to side clearly shows that one of the two games is faster and a bigger influence on the whole franchise, that doesn't mean that the game is worse. Some complain about the fact that Dreamland 3 is a slower paced game in comparison to Superstar, and also that the copy abilities still have one move instead of having a full on moveset, yet I think that's for the better. The game is meant to be a more laid back, calmer experience, and it can also be seen by its art style. It's all based on pastel colors and still looks awesome 20 years later. The gameplay also has a vast improvement, you can finally run a slide. Added were also three more animal bodies, Nago the cat, who can carry Kirby around and has the ability to triple jump, Choo Choo the octopus, uh, whatever, that can swallow enemies underwater and can stick to walls, and also has a thing for Kirby, what the fuck? And last but not least comes Pitch the Bird, the fastest of the bunch. This time, for the plot, you guessed it, Dark Matter is back. Dark Matter wasn't really defeated and it's now back to spread chaos. So it's now up to Kirby and friends to save Dreamland from this invasion once again. The game, when compared to the first one, has a much better sense of movement thanks to the plethora of additions that this game has received. The collectible this time, the Heart Star, isn't relegated to being in one level each world, but is in every single level. It might seem like Wag the Aswa first, but the game has got a massive upgrade design-wise, and so each mission feels rewarding. You get these art stars by doing favors to people, like being careful not to stomp flowers, clean a room, or maybe bring a specific animal body to the end of the level. No more of that cryptic bullshit the first game had, apart from the later levels of the game. The missions are also pretty easy to guess, since now the menus make everything more clear. But they sadly scrapped the idea of having a small explorer hub world to get from level to level. To make things better, the devs also added some familiar faces from other games into these missions, like Samus, Goku, and even Rob. Hey, ya dude! This was my favorite part of the game, since thanks to it, every level felt more distinct and diverse. Another thing that helped a lot to shape this game's identity is the soundtrack. It's iconic, catchy, and memorable. It's also the reason why we have so many flippin' memes using this song. As for the level design itself, it's pretty great. It does have its moments, but it's generally fast-paced and fun. The ability combinations, like the first game, are awesome to play around with, especially now that we have double the animal bodies. We also have a new ability, and you'll never guess what it is. Sword? Beam? Maybe wheel? Nope. It's cleaning. It feels so well, this game's atmosphere is crazy. The bosses are also something that I wanted to highlight, apart from Hakro, I FUCKING ate THAT WHALE! Every boss is great and creative. This game also was the first appearance of Adamine, or, well, Addo. Look at her go! I almost forgot to mention, but this game has multiplayer. Even in single player, anyone can summon, summon a queen. queen. But if there's two players, one can control him. I sadly didn't have the chance to try it out. Getting to the ending, we'll have to fight a possessed DDD in Dark Matter once again, and also fight Zero, a giant white orb with a red bloody iron front. 
Best part is, after defeating the first phase, the bloody eyeball gets separated from the body and we see all this gore. Reminder, this is a kid's game. The fight is actually very fun, and the game gives us a very pleasing ending if we collect all the heart stars. I have to say, this game was a fun experience from start to finish. And unlike the first game, it felt like more time of the development was spent polishing the actual game instead of being fixated on making the game experience longer. While this game's strongest point isn't definitely complexity nor length, this game still has a lot of charm, especially through the bosses, the cutscenes, the abilities, and the missions. Level design is not bad by any means, but at times it just kind of feels empty in some of these levels. I feel like this game is just so hated because of Superstar's sole existence, but there's a lot to love here. Well, that was sure fun, these two games were pretty different, but they were pretty gr- Oh my god, it changed again. The year is 1997, and the Nintendo 64 is still lacking any Kirby game whatsoever, and even though a sequel to Kirby's Dream Course and a brand new racing game were planned, they were both cancelled. How started developing a mainline outing for the Pink Puff on the Nintendo 64's add-on, the Disk Drive, which was a more powerful version of the console that Nintendo made to compete with the other companies' much more powerful hardware. Nintendo really had faith in this thing since they planned a ton of games for it, like a sequel to Mario RPG, a new Zelda game, a sequel to Mario 64, a mainline Pokemon game, and many, many more. Sadly, around 50 games that were planned for this add-on were cancelled after poor sales. But some games, like Kirby 64, were then ported to a vanilla 64 cart, but in the process, we sadly lost many, many, many elements. Some of these include the animal bodies, who would just end up as a cameo, a sub-game, some concepts, and most importantly, new playable characters. The game was planned to have four fully playable characters, Kirby, King Dedede, Adeline, and Waddle Dee. Sadly, only two of the four would end up as playable and one of them a DD just for a very short period of time. The game was clearly centered around these characters, to the point that most promotional material, cutscenes, and even the box art is fully centered on them all. Sadly, Adeline would be relegated for small roles for puzzles, and Waddle Dee would appear in level sections with different vehicles. As the plot of the game itself, guess who's back? It's Dark Matter. And this time, it's terrorizing a small planet inhabited by fairies called the Ripple Star. After the darkness starts spreading throughout the whole planet, the Queen of the Fairies sends her most trusted ally, Ribbon, to run away with the Crystal Shard, which seems to be the source of an imaginable power. Alright, 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 right. okay. Run the back. Hear me out. Hear me out. Look at her. Look. Look, are, are you looking? Well, you should, cause she's perfect. I sure am looking respectful if you know what I mean. She's beautiful, she has the little glasses, and she, she's adorable. <clears throat> Excuse me for that. Ribbon gets absolutely destroyed by Dark Matter and lands on Popstar, where she meets Kirby. Him, as the helpful boy he is, agrees to recollect all the lost shards of the now destroyed crystal. This game's graphics sadly don't look as great as Dreamland Freeze, but they surely have their charm. The biggest thing this game has to offer, though, is the ability to mix copy abilities. Let's say you inhale an enemy that gives you fire. If you spit the enemy out and it collides with another enemy that gains you an ability, they'll fuse. Sadly, there's no new abilities this time, but the beauty comes in seeing how the abilities will fuse. Some of these are super funny, like Ice Spark or Ice Bomb, but there's also some pretty genuinely cool ones like Spark Cutter, Bar Needle, and more. The levels themselves are all pretty unique from typical grasslands to abandoned factories and spooky castles. This game has a lot of creativity and it's never afraid to show it. The worlds you visit and the characters you will encounter will probably be some of the most interesting you may see in a video game. The collectible this time isn't relegated to just one per level, but three instead. That may sound like a chore, but they are pretty easy to do, for the most part. Like the prior games, you might need a combination of abilities, but this time, the game actually shows you what you need, thanks to a checkerboard pattern. Again, for the most part. Because you know, there's that one level where it just refuses to tell you what it is. But apart from that, the puzzles are pretty simple. You might need the help of your friends, or go to a certain part of the level, but it thankfully never gets to the ridiculous points of bullshit that Kirby's Dream Man 2 had. This game also has some pretty cool extras. 
like at the end of each level you get the chance to get an enemy card, which are very cute but not required for 100% completion. The other extras are the sub-games, and oh boy, saying these are awesome would be an understatement. First of all, you can choose between all the four main characters, which is pretty awesome on its own, but the sheer quality of these is just insane. A 100 yard hop is simple but fun, you just need to jump one space or two spaces without falling into ponds or hitting the frogs to arrive at the end of the race before your rivals can do so. Bumper crop bump as you taking fruit that is falling down from trees, and bumping other players so you get fruit before them. And then, there's checkerboard chase. You and four players are dropped into a small arena, and can make the entire line in front of you fall with a push up a button. The game is crazy fun, since you can get into a corner if you're not precise enough and every time a player falls down, the arena gets smaller. I would pay full price for these games. No, I would pay full price only for checkerboard chasing HD. Getting back to the game, it tells its story thanks to these very cute cutscenes that are around 60 frames per second, which is insane by N64 standards. They're all very unique and they feel alive with how expressive the characters are. Getting to the end of the game, we'll need to fight Miracle Matter, which is a super cool boss, since it takes Kirby's copy abilities and uses it as attacks, which is a super dope concept, especially because you can only attack the boss with said copy abilities. Like, if it's in its fire form, you can only use fire to attack. Brilliant. After a pretty easy fight, Ripple Queen gets her ass zapped by- <laughs> What the f- <laughs> Did I write these? It is revealed that Dark Matter was possessing her all along. If you don't get all the shards, Dig Make will make you know this the hard way by showing this very creepy cutscene, which is something very common throughout this entire trilogy. The real final boss is zero- No, I'm, I'm not gonna make the joke. It's a fairly interesting boss fight, as you'll need to use a shard gun to defeat the demonic creature. After the boss fight, the heroes get rewarded with a medal and Kirby gets a kiss in his cheek from Ribbon. Good. Hey, I'm back. Hey James, I just finished the free games. They were cool. Hope you had fun with my shape-shifting cartridge, dude. They also found a good book that showed me a way to get you out of here. You have my sympathy. Oh, cool. Bye then. Not so fast, Wonder Boy. You gotta beat me at a game first. That's what the book says. Sure, may I decide the game? You sure can. One round and you'll be at home safely, or you'll be stuck burning in hell until the end of time. Oh, well, I would like to challenge you to Kirby's Superstar Stacker for the Super Famicom. I uh, see. Let's get this done real quickly. You ready? Yep. James, look at that block! Is that Rick the Hamster from Kirby? Yep. That's him, and I also beat you while you weren't looking. You did trick me, you dumb mortal. Hey, you never said I couldn't cheat, so... You clever, clever man. You'll get away with it this time before I send you home. Do you have any last words? During this whole journey, I realized how good this series was. The trilogy of games was inconsistent at times, especially with its boring puzzles and its shitty level design at times, but it was a very fun experience. No matter how difficult the levels may get, there always were a lot of different friends and faces that were waiting for me. And the charm and style of these games will be something that I'll never forget. And I think that this trilogy is something that every single Kirby fan should check out. You know, maybe it was a blessing that I died. I would have just said bye, I mean, fair enough, see ya. I'm back! This is my outfit, this is my void, I'm back, and I'm alive! Even if I don't know if any of you actually saw what happened for the past 15 minutes. But it was a pretty fun experience. Uh, you know, it wasn't really on the spirit of Halloween, but these games were very fun. And if you somehow could see through my afterlife, which sounds very creepy, what did you think about these games? Did you play them? If you didn't, well, I advise you to check them out, because they're all pretty fun and charming in their own way. With that being said, Savvy out.